Hello beautiful people, my name is Amanda Zitto and as you can probably tell by the background behind me, I have made it home from my 8,000 mile loop of the United States. More like 7,929 miles. I'll put the kilometers on the screen for all of my non-US folks. <laughs> Let's see, I think the last time that I left you, I was clear on the other side of the United States uh, in North Carolina. So from North Carolina, I stay with Carl Lipke um, from Carl's Beast Rides. If you watch like my series on the Cabder, you'll know who Carl is. It was super awesome to get to stay with Carl and his fiance. From Carl's house, I went and I stayed with Doodle on a motorcycle in Georgia, and that was just fantastic. It was so cool to get to hang out with her for an afternoon. From Georgia, I went to Mississippi, and then from Mississippi, I hauled butt to Amarillo, Texas. I think I did about 700 and some miles in one day. And then from Amarillo, I went to Denver and I got to stay with Pete and his wife and Cynthia. Cynthia is the fat nomad for those of you who have watched her journey around the US. And while I was in Denver, I got to have breakfast with Eric and Lisa Hogan, who are the owners and creators of Wolfman Luggage, which is, was just so cool, you guys. I'm still over the moon about it. For those who don't know, I am a Wolfman Luggage ambassador. I became one in 2016 when Eric and Lisa took a chance on a girl riding a 30-year-old motorcycle that nobody knew anything about. And I didn't even have an audience at that point. And they chose to support me on my trip. And I will be eternally grateful. And I just, I love their products. I love what they do. I left Denver just in time to escape the snowstorm that hit Colorado, but I also ended up in Utah at the same time as that huge windstorm that rolled through happened. Thankfully, I didn't have to deal with a whole lot of the wind part, but I did have to ride through a couple of snowstorms that were hitting the tops of some of the passes um, going from Vernal to Salt Lake City. Uh, thankfully, none of the snow had started sticking on the ground yet. I just had a lot of slush build up on my windshield. <laughs> and by the time I got to Salt Lake City, the wind had kind of died down on I-80, so I got to go across there without any major issues. I finally stopped at the Bonneville Salt Flats after missing that opportunity in 2016. And uh, from Jackpot, Nevada, I rode all the way home in one day to Portland, Oregon on Wednesday, which was about 605 miles. I just wanted to be home and it feels amazing to be home. And I think I'm just as excited to edit the finished episodes for you guys as I was about leaving. <laughs> I did come home to a not so ideal situation. Uh, Oregon is dealing with some massive wildfires right now. Uh, the air quality outside of our house is pretty atrocious. Trying to breathe outside right now is very unpleasant. And our home is also unfortunately within the zone that may or may not have to be evacuated. Uh, <laughs> I get, we get to wait and find out. Anyway, I just wanted to say that it was an amazing experience. I'm so stoked that I took the opportunity when I did to do this trip. I took the opportunity I was given and I did what I could with it. I didn't put it off until later when I would have more time or the circumstances would be more ideal or I could have done it the way the internet seems to think that I should have done it. I did it now. You have no idea what tomorrow could bring. Especially right now being surrounded by wildfires. <laughs> Definitely not something that I ever expected our home in Oregon to be faced with. Uh, definitely something that I grew up with a lot in Montana, but yeah, just an example. You have no idea what's gonna come around the next corner. So my motto is that you do what you can with the time that you have now. If it matters enough, you'll make it work with what you got. On the way home, I was thinking about it and I think that this trip was an excellent uh, test lap. You know, when you go out there and you figure out what the obstacles are, where the ups and downs are gonna be, and that way the next time you go out, you can enjoy it even more. I think next I might do a Q&A to cover some of the questions you guys have about the trip as a whole. I've been getting a couple uh, reoccurring questions over on Instagram, or maybe I'll do a live stream. I don't know. Let me know what you guys would like to see down in the comments, live stream or just a regular Q&A video. Um, either way, dump your questions in the comments for me. I also want to give a huge, huge thank you here to all of my patrons, everybody who donated on Ko-Fi, everybody who sent money uh, during the live streams leading up to the trip. This trip would not have been possible without all of your support and encouragement. Just thank you. 
if you would like to get early access to the polished episodes as they come out ad free for as low as one dollar a month you can support me on patreon and get access to those as i finish them before they are public for the rest of the world. I'm finishing up my journal pages, so those will be up for patrons here really soon too. If you cannot support me monetarily right now, I 100% understand. Please take care of yourselves and your family, and I hope that you are safe out there. Question for my end screen crew, if you're not gonna drop questions in the comments for the Q&A video, have you ever had to ride through a snowstorm on top of a pass before? <laughs> okay, I'll see you guys later.